thing I've ever done. What about you? Amen. Well, listen, this morning we have an incredible privilege of dedicating some of the most beautiful children you've ever seen to God. And I want to ask, first of all, for our prayer elders who've been assigned to please come forward. And parents, as I call your child's name, I would like for you to come forward with your child, and I'll ask your families to come up in just a moment. But right now, we want you and your children to come. And first of all, we have Mrs. Paris, Miss Paris Williams. She's not a Mrs. yet. Paris Williams. Would Paris and her parents come? Oh, she's not here. Okay. All right. How about Jaden Umera? And we have some, some pictures of them up here. Chiameka Adodo. William Mburu. Talia Randolph. And Yura Marcus. I'd like to now ask for the family members if you would come and stand behind these families. Now, one of the things about pasture being gone is, you know, when the cat's away, the mice will play sometimes a little bit. <clears throat> And I really appreciate Pastor allowing me. You know, every minister has their own services. They have their own wedding services, their own uh, baby dedications. And uh, so I really appreciate Pastor allowing me to do the uh, baby dedication that I have. And so I hope, I hope you as parents and families will, will, uh, will bear with me on this. If you don't like it, then we'll, we'll do another one with Pastor here, okay? He doesn't know that, but we'll do it. Let me just say, parents, that children are an incredible gift from God, and he takes great delight in them. Psalms 127.3 says, Sons are a heritage from the Lord, and children a reward from him. As believers, we're called to recognize that children belong first and foremost to God. He blesses us with this precious gift to enjoy, but along with it comes a very awesome responsibility and one of those is to recognize our children and setting them apart for God so today church these parents come presenting first of all themselves and then their children for dedication to God and accompanying them and making this commitment are a host of family members as you can see parents Deuteronomy 6 4 through 7 says this it says love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul and with all your strength these commandments I give to you today are to be upon your hearts. Pre impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road and when you lie down and when you get up. Now this scripture and many others tell us that the role of parents is to love God, to love each other, and to teach your children to love God and to keep his commandments. This morning, I brought some arrows with me. And I want the elders to give one to you in order to illustrate the responsibility that you have in raising your child. Um, elders, your arrows are down here on the, on the steps. I want you to hand those to the parents because I want to tell you some things about this arrow. When I look at this arrow, I notice several things about it. First of all, I notice that it's small, but it's very powerful. It has the potential to protect or sustain life or the potential to injure or take a life. 
just like your child, he or she has an incredible potential. And the way that you raise them will have a significant impact on that potential. They will do good things in their life or bad things with their life. A lot of that will be determined by your influence. Ephesians 6, 4 says, Fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and the admonition of the Lord. That leads me to the next thing I notice about this arrow. It had some natural sharpness before the tip was placed on it, but for it to be the most effective, this arrow needed to be sharpened. That signifies to me that you should make it a priority to educate and develop your children in order for him or her to meet their full potential. Proverbs 22, 6 says, Train up a child in the way that he or she should go, and when they are old, they will not depart from it. The third thing I know about this arrow is that this arrow can travel a long way. This should remind you that your child can go farther than you can even imagine, and the measure of their influence on this world cannot be fathomed. In archery, the farther away the target is, the higher you have to aim. So always remember this and encourage your children that the sky is the limit. Remind them of the promises that God has given them, that he or she is precious in God's sight, and that he, God, has a plan and a purpose for their lives. Jeremiah 29, 11, you all know it. It says, for I know the thoughts I have for your child, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give them a hope and a future. The next thing I notice about this arrow is that, it, that its power depends upon the strength and the judgment with which it is sent. Now this signifies to me that you need God's wisdom in your life and in the decisions you make in raising your children. You're going to need to pray to God for your wisdom and your child's wisdom. Wisdom that their steps will be ordered by the Lord in every area of their lives, even to the point that you even need to begin now to pray for their future spouses. The Bible is full of scriptures about wisdom, but two that come to my mind are Proverbs 4, 7. It says, wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom, and in all you're getting, get understanding. James 1, 5 tells us how to get wisdom. It says, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives to all freely, and it'll be given to him. The next thing I know about this arrow is it, always, it didn't always look this way. It's made of wood, and at one time, it was a part of a tree. It had to be shaped and carved and sanded in order for it to be utilized effectively. This was not an easy process, and it signifies to me that you're going to have to do some uneasy things for your child in order for him or her to be the best, especially with regard to discipline. You're going to have to teach them the difference between right and wrong and that there are consequences for both. You're going to have to teach them to be men and women of good, good morals and integrity. Discipline, by the way, if you don't know, can sometimes be very difficult for parents. But it's necessary if your child is going to be utilized most effectively by God. You know, it's interesting that the word sin is actually an, an archery term, which means to miss the mark or to miss the target. If your child is going to hit the bullseye that God has for him or her, you're going to have to teach them about sin and the consequences of sin. Proverbs 22, 15 says, Foolishness is bound up in the heart of the child. The rod of correction will drive it far from them. Finally, this arrow reminds me that you should do whatever is in your power with the help of God to keep from sending a poison arrow into this world. I believe you'll do this by not only telling your child how to live his or her life, but modeling this to them. They're going to watch the way you live and the way you lead. And if you lead them by your example, that's the way that it's going to be the best. Because you do that by example much more than the words that you say. And I encourage you to let them see your love for God, your love for each other, your love for them, and your love for others. Let them see your obedience to God. This, is more, this more than anything else is going to ensure that their influence in this world is going to be positive and not poisoned. So today, we dedicate these precious children to God. But before we do, there are some vows that need to be made. Parents, because it's so important for your child to walk in the abundant life that Christ offers, I'm going to ask you today before God and these witnesses 
Will you vow with God's help and in partnership with your family and the church that you'll provide a Christian home of love and peace to raise your child in the truth of the Lord's instruction and discipline and to encourage him or her to one day trust Jesus Christ as personal Savior? If so, would you say, we will? For encouragement in fulfilling these vows, these parents call upon these family members that are here. There's great pride in seeing a new generation of family. And that joy is reinforced when children are raised to fear God. So today, before God and these witnesses, I ask you family members to vow by God's help to pray for and encourage these parents in their effort to raise their children in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. If you, if you will do that, please say, we will. Finally, I would ask you, the church family, to make a vow as well. Because see, as believers in the body of Christ, you have a responsibility to teach the gospel story to the younger generation. So you will be the ones who may be called upon to be nursery workers, children's leaders, youth leaders, college leaders, mentors, and ministers to these children. So I ask you today, will you vow by God's help to be faithful in your calling as members of the body of Christ to help these parents to be faithful to God and to help teach and train these children in the ways of the Lord so that they might one day trust him as Lord and Savior. If you accept this responsibility, please say, we will. Amen. Parents, would you please present your children to the elders? And elders, would you introduce these beautiful children to our church family? Would you take a few minutes, take them up and down the aisles and show our uh, church family what beautiful additions we have to our family. Okay, I get, I get, pastor calls me out for taking too long, staying back there too long. So you guys come back. Bring those children back here. Let me uh, have a word of prayer today over your children. Heavenly Father, Thank you today for each of these precious children that you've given as a gift to all of us. Today, together with their parents, these family members, and our church family, all who care deeply about the outcome of their faith, we dedicate each of them to you. We surrender all worldly claims upon their lives, and we proclaim today that they will belong to you, dear God, forever. Thank you for the great plan and the pr great purpose that you have for each one of their lives. We pray that nothing will hinder them from reaching their full potential and that they would become men and women after your own heart and do mighty things for your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now, elders, would you present the children back to their parents? And would you begin, would you begin to, oh, some of you already did that, I see. Would you begin to pray for them and their families for just one moment? I have one last thing that I want to do before we conclude. Throughout the Bible, to memorialize different events and blessings and miracles that God did for his people, 
They gathered stones and they built altars. So today I want to give you a stone which your elder will hand to you. It has your child's name on one side of it, and on the other side it says, Dedicated to God, June 3rd, 2018. This stone should help each of you to remember a few things. First of all, it should be a memorial to each of you about God and his grace and his answers to prayer. It should remind us that God is a miracle-working God, and no matter what we're going through, nothing is impossible with God. The stone should also remind us that God is a rock in our lives, that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, and that he's dependable, he's durable, and he's unchanging. And just like these stones that can withstand the devastation and storms of life, God will be our rock in the challenges and the storms of our lives. He's a God of protection, he's a God of provision, he's a God of miracles, and he's a God of love. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and he's the God of Jaden, Chiameka, William, Talia, and Yura. And finally, these stones will memorialize that on June 23rd, 2018, that Jaden, Chiameka, William, Talia, and Yura's lives were dedicated to God. It's my hope that during the significant events in their lives, the first day of school, when they become a teenager, when they accept Christ as their personal Savior, when they turn 16, when they graduate from high school, they graduate from college on their wedding day, that we'll be able to show them these stones to remind them that their lives were dedicated to God. And that maybe, maybe when they have their own children, they'll be able to pass these stones that we're giving them along to their children. Thank you so much. God bless you. You can, you can return to your seats. A lot of beautiful children. Give him a hand. Yeah. <laughs>